Hey guys, Kyle Bradshaw from Shopper Motorsports here with Michael Lindsay, and today we're looking at the Husqvarna FC450. Now, this is one of the bikes in Michael Lindsay's 450 shootout, and today we're looking at the differences between the 2019 and the 2020 model. So, in case you're on the fence, you don't know whether to go last year's model or this year's model, this video should help you out. Now, Michael, what are some of the big differences that we're looking at? So, a big one is just the way they've been thinking about setting up their bikes. So, yes, the K-Team and Husqvarna are almost nearly identical bikes. A lot of people wonder how, like in a shootout, we can even rate them apart from each other, but it's interesting that the differences in their airbox design create a different power characteristic. But also when you think of the bike from, a, from how it handles, a flex characteristic standpoint. So you think of the main frame, Okay, yeah, that's the same between both the bikes. The motor that sits in, in between them is the same. The entire subframe is different on this bike. The KTM is an aluminum subframe with a plastic airbox insert and sections on. This is a carbon composite one, like it's actually two P, it comes apart, but the airbox and subframe are in one design. So it's a completely different material. If you look at a frame and a subframe hook to it, okay, that's a, you know, a big chunk of area that can flex. And then another big one is a lot of people think the swing arms are the same. They aren't. The Husky has a different swing arm. One of the outer castings is quite a bit different on the Husky. It's cut different. So the Husky swing arm flexes more. And the subframe on the Husky flexes more. So it has a little bit more of a softer, supple feel throughout the entire chassis. And they tried to match the suspension character that this year. So usually the way they go about development is they develop the KTM first, uh, and then the Husky gets developed later. And to get a little more in detail for people that are curious is, KTM has a Europe spec, where they have a different, slightly different suspension setting and mapping over there. They have one built for the US that the US test riders set up finally. And I think Australia even has their own, so they do that. The Husky is a worldwide setting. The one I test here is the same way one you buy in Europe, the same one you buy in Australia. The KTM is a much more aggressive setup. This is the first year they really let the Husky guys have their own say on their suspension to a huge degree other than just small shim tweaks in. They let them design a whole setting. This bike is actually down a shock spring rate from the KTM. Base setting in the fork is down 0.3 bars, so basically a, a fork spring realistically in air pressure sense. And the valving is completely built around that. So to me, the KTM has this much more aggressive chassis and suspension character this one having the softer chassis and the suspension set up like that really kind of leans itself more towards like a, a novice a vet rider kind of just more of somebody that's looking for that comfortable package it's not quite as precise as the KTM at some points but it really really settles to the track a lot different thing we ran into in shootout is the KTM is actually a little bit harder to set up track to track but it is more precise. The Husky seems to mold itself a little better situation to situation. It's not always as precise as the KTM. It doesn't always give you the same feedback that feels as aggressive, but it just seems to work better track to track more naturally in its base setup, which I think for, you know, more of your general Joe Blow, your weekend warrior guy is probably gonna appreciate that more than the KTM. And especially for this bike, it wasn't like that last year in setup. So that to me is the biggest change is the overall way they've gone about setting up their motorcycle. You still get a physically light bike. It's only about three quarters of a pound heavier in the KTM, which is the lightest in the class. So this thing is six or seven pounds lighter full of fuel than the Cowie. It's 10 to 14 pounds lighter than the Honda, the Yamaha Suzuki. So big physical weight difference. Once again, for the Wheeling Warrior guy, maybe doesn't train and ride all the time. The power characteristic is fairly mellow on it, kind of like the KTM to a, even more of a degree, mostly because the air box on this bike is even more sucked in tight than the KTM, so it revs a bit slower. It still has great torque output. It has great horsepower numbers on the dyno. It's near the top of the class, but it just comes on very mellow. It doesn't bark to life. It just kind of rolls that power on. It tractors forward. But when you get into trouble, once again, this bike's up a little softer, so it's gonna take more of the hits and absorb more. And if you get a little whiskey, it's not gonna bark to life and launch over a berm or something. You're not gonna get that last minute into a corner when you're tired in a moto and you come in and you catch something, you tweak the bars and snap them back, you grab a handful, you're basically less likely to uh, over the berm and make a big mistake, uh, whether you're just riding for fun and you don't want to crash kind of situation, or if you're out there racing on the weekends and you don't have, you know, like I said, maybe the time to train and ride as much, it can really help you towards those later parts of the moto. Because like I said, just won't try to get away from you as quickly. Um, other things about it, it's kind of unique is a couple years back, KT Muskies me kind of lean more towards taller riders. I would say this is very middle ground, a smaller rider now. A um, few guys I've had ride this are tall. I highly recommend if you are a bit lankier because they come with a pretty low bar stock. You can try a little bit taller bar on this bike or I think IMS it is makes a five millimeter down, five millimeter back foot peg. I know some guys on their factory teams have run it. I tried it with a rider six foot one. Jeff Walker, if anybody on YouTube floats around, they probably have been on his channel. He's involved with a bunch of my shout stuff. He's pretty popular. 
he had tried really tall bars on his bike and while he's a tall person he's like most guys if they're around that height they're probably a little more leg and arms not that much torso when you sit and you have a tall bar it makes you sit super upright on the bike it makes it hard to transition your weight forward to rear on the bike and it gives you really high center of gravity in the corners and it doesn't make it as easier to roll over and i know most guys are running that tall bar so when they stand up they don't feel like they're as, as you know crouched over so running the down and back peg on this bike is definitely a really big gain for that it really helps out for the taller rider out there like ktm it's got the different map options one and two one's mellow two's a little more aggressive it has traction control which isn't based off wheel spencers it's off of rpm build it's a little bit different but really good in slick conditions maybe guys that still just really want mellow power want a slow rpm build and then it also does have optional airbox panels like the ktm came out with this year albeit much more minor on the husky it has a sealed one and a perforated one but the perforation on the husky is very minor so there isn't there's definitely a difference between those airbox lids in power characteristic but it's much smaller than what you notice on the ktm once again a little more perforation means more airflow at low rpms it makes it pick up a little quicker on the rpm response feels like it revs a little quicker through the range yeah like i said overall if somebody's on the fence between the 19 and the 20 20 is definitely even though it's not a big overhaul change just the way they went about their base setup to me is a really big difference um, it really makes the bike overall for more of that general consumer a much easier package to ride and i think it's much easier to set up track to track which ultimately ends in a better riding experience there you have it guys those are the differences between the 2019 and 2020 husqvarna fc 450. if you like this video today please give it a thumbs up if you want more action like this coming directly to your inbox please hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you can be part of the notification squad i'm carl bradshaw this is michael Lindsay. until next time take care and ride safe out there